In part four of this tutorial series, we will be creating the necessary logic and triggers for events where the player sinks the ball in the hole or puts the ball out of bounds. So the three things left to implement for the ball controller is a way to stop the player from putting the ball while it is still rolling and a detection for when the ball has uh, entered the hole at the end and also a detection for when the ball has fallen out of bounds and a way to return the ball to its last uh, putting position. So the there's a bit of a um, bit of a relationship between the detection of the ball in the hole and the uh, prevention of 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 putting and and the line renderer being disabled while the ball is rolling and all of that because we while the ball <clears throat> is in the hole um, it will be moving very slowly but we don't want to show the player the line renderer uh, while the ball is in the hole, essentially. Um, because then, you know, it, it, it's a little bit confusing because the player says, well, it's in the hole, so why is it still giving me um, a visual for, for putting? You know, so. So what we'll have to do is set up some trigger detection, collision detection, uh, and some other properties. But first, let's grab our hole piece. So in the mini golf models, let's just take our square uh, end here. Let's add a mesh collider, prefabs, hole square original prefab and then let's just go and delete this and then vertex snap our end here you can see the hole is here so what we need to do is we need to create a cube and then just scale that down quite small about about that's fine we could even go smaller about there whoops it doesn't matter too much exactly you know but as long as we can get it inside so let's just look at it from above and f2 there we go so we're covering the hole there which is good Okay, so I would click that middle thing to get out of the orthographic view. And then let's just bring it a bit, you know, above the, not like just just above it, but like about halfway up the hole, about here is good. And we want to take this to trigger. So what this is going to do is it's going to have a tag on it. And let's, let's set the tag now, let's add a tag. And let's just call it hole and this is case sensitive and so what's going to happen is when the ball rolls in there it enters the trigger we'll have a function that's called whenever the ball enters a trigger and it'll check does the trigger have the tag let's set the tag now hole um, and every hole needs a flag so let's go into a mini golf and let's get a red flag and let's set the flag as a child of the cube and then let's just rename this instead of cube let's call it hole trigger hole trigger uh, and we'll set the flag to be right in the middle so set the x and the z to zero and the Y is fine as it is, rotation is fine. And there you go, you have your whole trigger. Um, 
flag is okay. I might I might make the the flag a little bit smaller. Just a touch. Um, the flag has no colliders on it, so the ball will just pass right through it. Uh, it's more just for an aesthetic. Um, and then let's make that a prefab. Hold trigger. There you go, prefab. So that's that part done. Now moving on to our ball. We want to go to the ball controller script. And there are two trigger methods that we uh, that we want to um, specify so first one is on trigger stay so this is called on every frame while the ball is 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 inside a trigger and we want to say if other dot tag equals and the other sorry the other one is on trigger oh, on trigger exit and then Right, so something that we want to do is that what can often happen is if someone puts the ball too hard, it can skim across the top of the hole or it can kind of just, you know, bounce in and then bounce out. So we don't want to count that as a, um, you know, as a, a sunken ball. Um, it needs to be <clears throat> in the hole and stay in there for... I don't know, it could be two seconds, um, rather just hopping in and bouncing out because they've hit it too hard, which forces the player to be, you know, more careful and, and, and precise with, with the strength that they putt um, the ball with. So rather than putting all of the code uh, inside here, we'll just create a method called private void, we'll call that count whole time and we will need a measure uh, keep you know need a track keep track of that uh, in a float uh, we we'll call that whole time and we'll need a public float called min hold time that we can set in the inspector so we can decide how long we think the hole needs to the ball needs to be in the hole before we can safely assume that it, it has uh, not just bounced out of the hole in and then out so while it's in the hole and we will be calling this here. Count whole time. Call that every frame. So we'll say whole time plus equals time dot delta time. And if whole time is greater than or equal to min hold time, then we can essentially say, here, I'm just gonna write a comment, and this is what we'll write later. What it's basically saying, um, you know, player has finished, uh, move on to the next, Player. And then we can just set the hold time to zero for the next player. Sorry, hold time 
equals zero for the next player. Now, if the player has uh, jumped out of the hole, once again, we can say private void left hole. And this is just something as simple as saying hole time equals zero. Left hole, whoops, left hole, control S. So as soon as, as soon as the, the ball enters a collider, it will start and it will check every time, is this a whole collider? If it's so, it will call count whole time every frame. It'll keep adding delta time every frame. And then, so delta time, when you add it every frame, it's just like regular time, you know, counting in seconds. And so then we just check if the, uh, the whole time has surpassed the minimum whole time that it's been in the hole long enough. But as soon as it jumps out, leaves the whole trigger, we call that set it back to zero and it needs to count back up to two. And it, if it when, it, when it next enters the hole again. So that's pretty important. And here is how we will be able to prevent the player from putting while the ball is still rolling. And that's simply by creating an if statement, if ball dot velocity dot magnitude is greater than 0.01 f. Now this value is uh, specific to my physics settings. So you can always um, debug debug.log this value here and just check out what it is. And then you can actually see at what speed does it get before it kind of drops to zero essentially. So you can really make sure that you're not giving them the, uh, giving them the ability to, to move to putt before it's completely stopped. Um, but it's, I think it's good to give them a little bit a little bit of leeway uh, in case the ball is vibrating a little bit or it's kind of stuck in a little bit of a funny spot you can give them a little bit of just a little bit of, of, of a buffer so essentially you just want to put all of this inside here you only want to do this if uh, the velocity sorry not greater than less than if it's less than that value uh, we still you know, update our line positions and everything. Um, otherwise, if the magnitude is uh, higher than that, we want to line dot enabled to equal false. We don't want to see the line. Now here's the part where where we're kind of using the uh, ball hold time to determine when we actually enable it. So in our update position, so in our, um, where is it? Our, yeah, so yeah, in our update line positions, which is being called if our uh, velocity is less than 0 0.01, then we just want to do, we want to have it enabled as long as it's not in the hole, because even when it's in the hole, it can roll around very slowly. Um, and we don't want that to happen. So if hole time equals zero, so as long as it's not in the hole, then line dot enabled equals oh, equals true. If you want to save a bit of space, you can even just do this and just convert it into just one line, just like that. Does the same thing. And we'll 
I'll just hit save on that. And now we can, uh, oh, actually, one thing we'll just quickly do is let's just debug dot when we, when we actually get in the hole, let's have a message. Let's say um, I'm in the hole, in the hole, and it only took me. Putts, putts, and it only took me this many putts to get it in. Okay, so hopefully this will, this should um, be seen in the console. So save all that, go back here. Uh, make sure we set our min hold time to, I would say, two seconds, I think is good. Uh, and we should be good to go. Let's give it a run. Oh, my computer's being a little bit slow. Oh, something I would like to do uh, just quickly in our whole trigger. We just want to get rid of this mesh renderer because we don't need to see. Uh, we don't need to see that there. It's fine if it's invisible and it looks better that way. So save the scene. Let's run that back again. Let's get our console open so we can actually be ready for it. Let's get some power. Boom. Yep, there we go. It slowed down enough. You can see it's not. Oh, I got in. And bang. I'm in the hole, and it only took me two putts to get it in. Two putts. And that'll happen. That'll be keep coming every two seconds. But as soon as that two seconds is up, we'll just be swapping over to either the next player or the next level if it's just one player or if it's the last player. Awesome. And we should be able to get a hole in one if it's lined up well. If I just, oh. Hold on. If I go full, if I, if I have maximum power, I can get, I can get this in a hole in one. If the computer doesn't die. Oh, it's not happy. Yeah. Oh, a. There we go. Two seconds in. I'm in the hole, and it only took me one putts to get it in. All right, that's fine. Great. Uh, and the last thing to take care of is our out of bounds. So. First of all, for out of bounds, we're going to need to create something to detect that. So let's create a, let's create a plane. Let's set that position to zero. And we can just set that to, I don't know, a hundred by a hundred. And it makes for a nice backdrop uh, on our, on our golf course, all okay. Um, and in fact, while we're doing this, let's just tidy this up. Make a um, an empty object called course, just to act as a as a parent. And let's take all of our pieces straight end, straight hole, course. A uh, hole trigger can sit outside. That's fine. For all of that, okay. And uh, just so it's not so high up, let's let's select the bolt trigger two, hold trigger two. Let's bring that down a bit. A bit above is fine. Yeah. Oh. Okay. 
that's looking that's looking nice um and then on our plane we need to make a tag we've got the mesh collider by default on it and let's just call it out of we can make it one word or out of we can make it out of out of bounds all with uppercase o's and uppercase b with spaces out of bounds go go back to the plane apply the tag and this is this is quite simple uh, to implement um, we'll need to be able to get the ball out of bounds to begin with so let's get rid of this piece what we can do is we can bring in another little special kind of piece uh, called here it is gap and let's bring that one in add a mesh collider add it to our prefabs original prefab bring our gap under our course and then we can vertex snap it in like that there we go so if our ball touches the ground it will be sent back to the previous putting position so let's go back to our code let's uh, set up a on collision enter if collision dot collider dot tag equals remember it's case sensitive out of bounds Uh, then we need to set the player position to the previous position. Now we have to be setting that. So let's create a variable for that. Private in the form of a vector three. Private vector three. Um, we can call that. We can call that last last position, and we want to record the last position right before we putt. So, right before we putt, before we do anything, we want to say last position equals transform dot position like that. Great, and then we go down here, out of bounds. We want to say transform dot position equals last position. But what's going to happen is that if it hits the out of bounds with any kind of momentum, it's going to hold that momentum. So we want to set our ball dot velocity to vector three dot zero and our ball dot angular velocity to vector three dot zero and that will take care of that so let's go and give it a test hit play and uh, let's uh, come up with a sort of position I'll we'll come out a little bit from the wall so it's clear so this is the last position and then once we enter the gap Oh, we're back here and you see it still counts as a putt five putts six putts all right
now that we've done that, let's head back or let's head forward to the goal. And we're in, oh, it appears perhaps that our It could be a bit too uh, could be a bit too low. So let's move this up. There we go. Just slightly. It may have been a little bit too low, just barely, so that when it went in the hole, it was touching the um, the plane that we put down. So let's just try that again. Let's see if we can get around that. There we go. And then, there we go. And we're in there. And it only took me two putts. And that's sorted. So we can save that. And so that concludes the primary uh, functions of the ball controller.